let the real deal now. Woo! Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show, week number 13 on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian WWE podcast that reacts and discusses to Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten. We have your fan questions out there, and that will be at the end of the show every week the lowdown show is broadcasted live right here on spreaker available at spreaker.com slash nhbwp or on the spreaker app available for all android and apple devices and that's how you can chat with us right here on the show we have a chat listed or uh, on spreaker itself after we are done recording the podcast it is posted in full on spreaker itself on our youtube channel youtube.com slash nhbwr iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holes Bar WP and join on the conversation by having your questions read right here at the end of the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. All links will be in the description below on the YouTube version of this podcast. I'm your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, as always. And today I'll be doing the show alone, so it's a solo show by me. If you're new to the show, usually I have a uh, co-host. He's my corporate co-host, Corporate Cappy, but he has a summer hiatus. He has a lot of work to do, and work is just interfering with doing the podcast. So- Hello? I think I can. I think I got it now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I think I got it now. I, I hope so. <laughs> um, I don't know what was going on there. I could see. I can see it. People in the chat saying my voice was glitching. I actually read that, or I could see that on my uh, my levels here. It was kind of glitching out. Um, I hope it's better now. If it's better, guys, let me know in the chat. Got Michael Chow TV, the podcast in the chat, and I also got Greg here. Um, Okay, so they're saying it sounds good now. Sorry about that, guys. I actually don't know what the heck that was. I'm trying to look at my... Uh, I don't know what's going on, man. Ever since this Windows update, my my computer's been doing some weird, weird things. Um, especially, like, changing, like, uh, voice voice crap that I already had set up. I had it, it went all back to default, and I really don't even remember what I did last time to set it up. So, um, I've been trying to get it back to normal, but it's, it looks like every single time I try to, it didn't, something else comes up, man. I'm having weeks of uh, crap, and okay, well, whatever. Anyways, um, I'll probably have to edit that for the, sh- the the actual YouTube podcast, but if not, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, basically, what I said, guys, was uh, we have a GoFundMe page you can support. Um uh, supports us getting to WrestleMania next year, and uh, basically I was talking about how there's so much news getting coming out in the WWE, and I wish I could do, oh my god, I wish I could do like a, a everyday news show, like a radio show every day, but I just really don't have the time for it. I'd love to do it, but I can't, and it sucks because every Sunday it's a whole week of news, and that's when I do my new show, The Sunday Night Heat, and um, it's crazy. Um, I, I'd want to do it every day, but I. Uh, Waiting a whole week for all that news is is a lot, and this Sunday's episode is going to be a lot. Um, I just kind of want to touch base with a couple things that have been coming out. Um, first thing is one thing that is really personal to me, and because uh, Paige is my favorite diva right now, like n- my number one, and I followed her her entire career uh, ever since uh, she was getting tryouts for NXT, and I've loved her ever since. I love her character, she. Her persona, her her work in the ring is just incredible, and she comes from a huge wrestling family. So I, I followed her entire career. And what's what's going on now with her and Del Rio is, is extremely wrong, and I'm very sensitive to that subject because I really don't feel like any woman out there deserves to get uh, beaten or treated in any way as the rumored uh, reports of Del Rio uh, treating Paige. And now with her brother coming out and saying. Uh, reporting that it, it, this is true and report and getting people to help her, uh, I'm I'm fearing for Paige's life right now, and this is Paige is not in a good place. And what's shocking to me is that WWE won't is not doing anything to help Paige. I hope they are behind the scenes, and we just can't see it. I really hope they're trying to do something because it doesn't look like it on the outside. Like they're absolutely doing nothing. They're sitting on their hands, just waiting for it to blow over, and this is literally wrong. 
I don't understand why they're not stepping in here and helping one of their contracted talent. Like, this is extremely wrong. Yeah, there's been... They, she's associating herself with someone the company obviously doesn't like, like anymore and really just wants to get away from, but she is contracted to your company. Anything that's happening with her, news-related and getting uh, attached by TMZ and all this crap, is reflecting on you, WWE. And you, it's like they don't know it. It's like they think it's not, but it is. And for them not to step in on a serious issue like this is really questioning myself in in this company. Like, how are you getting letting this getting how are you letting this happen to one of your contract? How are you not stepping in and helping her, finding the sources to help her? Because this is bad. Like, this is turning really bad, and the evidence is just getting more and more, and the situation is getting more worse by the second. And now with the the, the leaked um uh, that sound clip of. Paige and Del Rio in the airport and Paige or Del Rio apparently being on coke for the last few days and him drunk out of his mind. This is not a good situation. And her, obviously her brother saying that she gets, she's been beaten for the last six months by Del Rio. Like this is an extremely serious, uh, situation here. And I, and I hope that we can step in and do something. Uh, Michael Chow in a chat saying in the nineties, Steve Austin was arrested for assaulting his then wife, Deborah, Dude wasn't even touched. Thumbs down to WWE. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, it's it's sad. It's, it's extremely sad. And for a company that like promotes anti bullying and all that crap, I mean, it, it's really shocking that they're not stepping in here. How do you go and promote stuff like that, but then you won't even help one of your contracted females that's in an actual serious situation? This is becoming almost a mental health issue, and WWE is slowly skidding towards there where there's going to be bad impl- implications here, man. They're, like. The backlash from this is not going to be good. Everybody needs to step in and help Paige soon, man. Like, she's got a, such a bright future. Twenty-four years old, and and what she's done at at this point to get the at this point to get there, and her history is is insane. I, I honestly don't understand how Derby doesn't do anything here, and I hope they do soon. So, anyways, enough of that. I'll get into more of this stuff on Sunday in the Sunday Night Heat. Um, but yeah, the show is uh, my initial reaction and discussion of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown this week. Um, wow, uh, crazy week this week. Raw was actually pretty decent. Uh, not gonna lie, there, of course there are its down and slow moments like there usually is. You're never gonna have a perfect three-hour Raw. Raw is never gonna be perfect from start to finish. There's gonna be the dead spots. It's a three-hour show. They gotta do something, man. It, it's hard booking a three-hour show good from start to finish i know we could out here and us in the wrestling community think we can book a a perfect three-hour show but i guess it's tough for them and they're gonna have the dead spots but raw was actually pretty entertaining this week i liked a lot of it uh smackdown it was all right i think they could have done a little bit better with smackdown um one thing a lot of people are noticing right now is the the lack of pyro and i was gonna save I'll just touch base on it and say more of it. Uh, apparently, WWE is doing cutbacks on Pyro. We've seen WWE cutbacks before, obviously, with the pay-per-view stages saying the same every single pay-per-view. It kind of looks like they're going towards that road with the Pyro and maybe saving the Pyro for big events. I'll have more news on that on Sunday's news. Um, other than that, so yeah, SmackDown just felt kind of... It, it didn't It didn't compete with Raw. It tried to compete with Raw, but to me, it was just a, a normal episode of SmackDown. Nothing stood out. Um, Raw, there's a lot of stuff that stood out this week, so I, I'm probably going to give it to Raw this week in the whole brand war situation with our show and where we pick uh, which brand won the week. Definitely Raw won this week. Um, Michael Shaw asked me to do a, a quick review of Great Balls of Fire. And, <laughs> it was all right, Michael Shaw. You know, I liked it. There, I, I, I honestly skipped through a couple of matches. I didn't watch the Miz Ambrose match because I didn't give a shit about it. Honestly, I, that feud just doesn't. It, it does nothing for me. Um, what other match didn't I watch? I, okay, so I watched the Iron Man tag team match. I watched the ambulance match. Uh, I watched Samoa Joe's and Brock Lesnar's match. And I watched the women's match. And out of those matches alone, the pay-per-view was really good. I didn't watch the Cruiserweight match because the Cruiserweights are doing nothing for me right now. And it sucks because I love 205 Live. Um, the woman, the women's match was probably my favorite match of the night, to be honest, Michael Chow. I know everyone's like saying uh, Strowman and Reigns definitely outshined everyone because of the whole situation that happened after and the whole attempted murder nonsense. Um, but I've seen that in WWE before, so to me, it's it's awesome to see and it's a it's a cool moment. But I've seen it before. Like we, if you don't, if anyone remembers, 
I don't know if anyone remembers back in 2003 when Shane and, and Kane had a feud and Kane went through the top of the limo to try to get Shane McMahon, I'm pretty sure. And Shane got out of the limo and put the, the limo in drive and it went, it drove right into the, right into a freaking pickup truck or not a pickup truck, uh, like a big 18 wheeler. And it like literally destroyed the entire limo. Like the whole limo was killed. And it was worse than what we saw with the ambulance. I'm I, in my opinion. Um, but no one said anything about attempted murder back then. But now, every with the world and how sensitive it is this year, holy crap, man! Or how I would—I mean, not this year, but now, how sensitive the world is. No wonder people are claiming it's attempted murder and making stupid ass petitions about getting uh, Roman Reigns arrested. Like seriously, you got nothing better to do with your life than making a petition. Like, it's sports entertainment. Get over yourselves. I hate—I hated that. I hated that stupid petition that was going around. I was probably the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Literally, just get over yourself. It's TV. Just. Oh my god, man! It literally is stupid. And for some people, people are we're just getting a laugh out of it and thinking it was just stupid. But uh, I don't know. I, I I couldn't give a shit about it. It, it was. It is what it is. It's entertainment. Uh, we got something to boost up the pay per view. Uh, Lesnar and 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 Joe was obviously too short. Um, I liked it though. I hope they actually continue this. And it looks like they are, but it looks like they're going to include everybody. But you know what? I'm alright with that. Um, <laughs> Michael Chow in the chat saying Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins was your favorite match. Oh man, yeah, that was a uh, five star. I think Dave Meltzer gave that a six star match there, Michael Chow. That was a uh, that was definitely a show stealer. I have to go back and watch it. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> on a serious note, Great Balls of Fire was all right. Um, I loved the women's match that definitely stole it for me. Really, really good match between those guys. Um, the Iron Man match is really cool to see too. Uh, a lot of people weren't a fan of them. I, I liked it. Um, it's definitely leading to the Hardys becoming more broken as we just saw this past Monday Night Raw. Um, uh, Matt Hardy getting that big gash above his eye. And that was nasty. And <laughs> the picture he posted on Twitter afterwards is hilarious. Um, yeah, and Michael Chow in the chat saying, no petition to have Del Rio arrested. Good job, Universe. Yeah, how about we start one, Michael Chow? I honestly think we could probably get it trending. If we go to change.org and make one, I guarantee you it would get a lot of attention. So if me or you want to go and make one, I'd be happy to share it around and get the, the word out there. Um, so let me know, Michael Chow. DM me on Twitter. Uh, um, so yeah, getting a little bit off topic here. So that was great balls of fire. I liked it. It was all right. Uh, we'll see if battleground can top it. Uh, let's get into raw. Uh, raw was okay. I mean, like I said before, it had its moments where they were kind of dead, but there's a lot of good, uh, spots this week on raw. Um, my favorite one was probably the most unreal promo ever this week, uh, that I've seen between Lesnar, Joe and Reigns. I could only imagine if, uh, <laughs> uh, if, if Strowman ended up being there, um, that would have made it probably a little bit better, but I think they're kind of saving Strowman for next week because what we got out of this. Um, but Lesnar and, and cutting a really good promo. Joe cutting the best promo out of all three of them. Reigns kind of just sat there and said a few things that really were irrelevant. Reigns is just there. you know. You know Vince, Vince has to have him somewhere. Um, but Lesnar and Joe definitely were the best in this whole promo situation. Um I could, you can feel the intensity out of this feud. That's why I loved about it. This this whole promo gave me goosebumps, man. You can feel the anger. You can you can actually believe the story they're telling in in this like this this giant feud that they're building. And now with uh, Samoa Joe and Reigns going one on one next week to see who faces SummerSlam or uh, Roman Reigns at SummerSlam or sorry, Reigns and Joe go one on one next week and facing Lesnar at SummerSlam. It only points to Strowman coming back. It's 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 so obvious. But then there, if he comes back, we're gonna actually have a fatal four way match. It looks like at SummerSlam, unless they have something else in mind. Um, but yeah, I'd be fine with a fatal four way. Actually, you know what? I don't mind it. A lot of people give it gripe and giving shit to it. But you know what? I actually want want to see that. Uh, that's a monstrous fatal four way match. And that definitely would bring in a lot of people to see that at SummerSlam, man. It's a huge match. Um, I just don't like... I, I read a report, which I'm going to read on Sunday, about more multi-man matches at SummerSlam than regular one-on-one matches. I really hope that's not the case. But I'm all for this match being a multi-man match, and that is a fatal four-way with Lesnar, Joe, Reigns, and Strowman. Um, but this this week's promo was awesome. Definitely one of the... Actually, you know what? It was the best part of Raw. I'm not, I'm not trying to be biased here. And obviously, I love the Hardys, and I love the whole broken thing. I could say that that was the best part. But this was definitely the best part of Raw. Um, 
just oh my god i can't wait to see more promos between these guys and more work that they're going to do leading into SummerSlam. we're still a month and a half month and a half away from SummerSlam, so this is going to be a really sick build and i really hope it gets better as it goes along um Next thing I want to talk about with Raw, uh, God, man, the Mizzies. What the fuck was that? What? The, honestly, what the fuck? What, seriously, why did they just keep coming up with more cringe and cringe things with the Miz? They had the Miz Bear, and then they got uh, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. I know they were getting TV time for these guys. They weren't doing anything but being catering. But literally, this, this, are you kidding me? The Mizzies. You really couldn't think of anything better. But the Mizzies, the work they did for the rest of the show was good. But for this crap, it literally was just a, a TV filler spot. Literally, there's nothing else to it. And we got Ambrose interrupting after, and Rollins came out to save Ambrose. And then Ambrose and Rollins got it in it backstage, saying Ambrose was like, hey, don't help me out, Rollins. You know, I can do this on my own. They kind of teased the Shield reunion, and even Ambrose was like, this is not a Shield reunion. But it kind of aims towards like we're probably going to get something like that maybe by even survivor series so we'll see what happens um but that was the worst segment i've ever seen that guy goes up there with bailey and alexa bliss this is my life and the Miz bear and all this bull crap that follows along with that um yeah uh the mizzies was probably the worst worst thing of the night maybe I don't know, actually, maybe the... And, and Corporate Cabby's going to die when I'm talking about this. The Big Show opening Raw was probably another worst part of Raw. What the fuck does this guy have to be on TV for? Do we actually need to see Big Cass and Big Show feud? Does anyone actually care that Big Show is on TV and he's going to feud with Big Cass? Big Cass is coming out there saying that he deserves a universal title shot, yet Big Show interrupts, and it looks like we're going to get a Big Show and Big Cass feud. That is the worst idea imaginable. I do not care for... How can you open a show like that? Have that shit in the middle of the show where everyone's falling asleep and then suddenly wake up near the end of the show. Put that spot in there and then it's okay if we miss it because it didn't do anything. Why did that have to open a show? How does that get me into the show? Honestly, it was horrible. Um... Yeah, Michael Chow in the chat saying you can totally see the difference between SmackDown Miz and Raw Miz. Yep, it's it's true. Um, <laughs> Michael Chow saying he only cares about the Big Show and a <laughs> and a big cast feud if Big E is the cast ref. <laughs> oh, it sucks he's on SmackDown, but uh, no, I pff, it is garbage. I on uh, th- th- this whole big big thing. You just see how this is all Vince and his love for big men. Um, Bad, bad way to open a show, in my opinion. I think it was the worst idea, but I'm not going to talk anymore about that because really, again, does nothing for me. Uh, we had Finn Balor and Elias Samson. It looks like they're kind of continuing that feud. I kind of, uh, it's intriguing to me, man. Finn Balor and Elias Samson. They had a good match, man. Both these guys put in a r- really good work, and I honestly would love to see Finn Balor and Elias Samson continue it. I just don't know how long they can continue it for. Um, I'd love to see Finn in another feud besides Elias Samson at, at SummerSlam. I mean, what else is Finn Balor going to do? If Finn Balor is hes too big of a guy to have like a normal one-in-one match or a pre-show match at SummerSlam against Elias Samson. Unless they're adding more to this, I don't know what's going on. Maybe Elias Samson uh, gets Finn Balor mad enough that the demon comes out and they do something with the demon facing Elias Samson. I don't know. I don't know. If they're going to continue this, I want to see more out of this because I love both these guys. Elias Samson is a huge... Huge boost since coming up to the main roster and Finn Balor obviously being the guy that he is. I just I can't see this feud dragging along until SummerSlam unless something big happens. If not, Finn's got to go for somebody else. I love. I mean, everyone wants to see him and Bray Wyatt finally go at it. The Demon versus um, Eater of the World, or, you know, the self-proclaimed God nonsense. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um. So speaking of why Rollins and him had the the main event spot this week, which is interesting, um, and it was a rematch basically from their Great Balls of Fire match, and Wyatt wins with a thumb to the eye, winning dirty. I mean, it's crazy. Finn ba- Bray Wyatt has won twice in two days. Insane guy with like one of the worst records on the roster wins twice in a row. I would have thought, man. I I honestly would have took Rollins in both matches. Seriously. Um, it's just crazy. I, I, I want to see Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor go at it. Rollins needs something else. I kind of see 
maybe that actually happening. I don't know what they do with Eli Samson in this case, but maybe Finn or uh, Ambrose and uh, Rollins end up turning on each other. One of them turns on each other because they're, they kind of tease like, kind of like you know, don't help me out, kind of kind of way this week on Raw, especially with Ambrose with Rollins. So maybe uh, Ambrose eventually wins the title from Miz before. SummerSlam, or maybe it's a non-title match, but I think we, maybe we see Ambrose versus Seth Rollins one-on-one at SummerSlam. I kind of see that happening. I mean, I'm not for it, but I hope something uh, happens out of this. And I don't know. It, it's tough to see what's going to happen because, like, at the end of this match, Miz and the Miz Taraj come out, and they, they target Rollins, and they start attacking him. And Ambrose comes for the save this time on Rollins. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with these guys. Uh, it looks like they're they're doing it right. They're, they're, they're not giving us everything right off the bat because they they have to slow build it because SummerSlam is a month and a half away. So it's gonna, maybe we're, we're going to get this feud now for the next couple of weeks and then they'll start a new feud maybe at the beginning of august or at the end of july kind of thing um so we'll see what happens um another thing i want to talk about from raw uh sasha banks and bailey faced uh, alexa bliss and nia Jax. Meh, it was all right it was a decent match it kind of looks like they're they're kind of going towards a fail four-way maybe at uh SummerSlam for the women's title i mean i don't like that it, it, honestly it should be Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss versus Bailey in a triple threat. I kind of would love to see that uh, more than Anaya Jax being added, but I don't know. It's just I don't if they're if they're going to the Fatal Four Way route, then what the hell are the other women on Raw doing? What like where where are they? Where's the where's Dana Brooke? Right? Where's Emma? Weren't they just on TV? Back on TV? Now they're gone already, and we we do, they did, there's nothing. They're not injured. They're nothing. They're just not there. Where the hell did they go? Why aren't they included into this? I think I got a random uh, opportunity some week. Just all of a sudden they're back for no apparent reason. There's a three-hour show. How do you not fit these girls on the TV? Unbelievable, man. <laughs> I bet you a lot of people out there just f- forgot about that. That Emma and and uh, Dana Brooke are supposed to still be on TV. Incredible, right? Anyways. Uh... Moving on, what else happened on Raw? Yeah, the Broken Hardy thing. I want to talk about that. Uh, they made a huge, 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 huge tease this week on Raw, and it was awesome. I had goosebumps watching this. You guys probably out there had a lot of goosebumps watching this as well. Um, but basically, Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy both teasing the whole Broken gimmick, and uh, I'm hearing that the it, it, the last two weeks, are, it, it's been almost finalized, this deal, and it kind of looks like it is, probably is finalized. Maybe this was the the start are they fully broken? Because it's, they've always been teasing since since WrestleMania. They've been teasing it, and now it's just they got us more of a tease. They got us like half the gimmick already. And with Jeff Hardy doing a whole obsolete song, and Matt Hardy saying they're a little bruised, they're a little broken, and it's insane, man. <laughs> he he basically cut a fully broken promo. So. I think we're probably going to get the Broken Hardys by SummerSlam. A lot of people are saying maybe the night before, the night after. Um, I'm saying at SummerSlam, we're probably going to get the full Hardys uh, fully broken. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. If they have the deal finalized, are they just going to all of a sudden give us a broken gimmick? Or are they going to slowly build towards it? It kind of looks like they might slowly build towards it as they have been since WrestleMania. But this week was an awesome moment. And then the club coming out... um, interrupting them and it led to a hardy's and club match the club ended up winning against well the hardy's already like almost like half not not to be a pun but half broken from their great balls of fire match and the revival come out and attack the hardy so looks like there's kind of a uh, a four-way team thing going on here maybe they do a fail for a tag team match at SummerSlam for the titles i really hope not maybe they have uh, an elimination style one number one contenders match between the three and then the winners end up being the Hardys and they go after Cesaro and Sheamus again. I don't know. It, it's again, it, it's tough to see at this point when you're looking at raw at this point up until SummerSlam, there's so much that could happen, but you don't want to go ahead and guess anything right now because it could change in a snap of a finger because we're a, well, a month and a half away. We never know what's going to happen. WWE could honestly change their minds. Uh, I don't know, two weeks from now and we can get a whole different feud. So we'll just have to roll with it guys and see what happens with this. So, 
Raw this week was all right. I mean, we had Goldust and R-Truth continuing their thing, so we never know how long that's going to go to. I hope it doesn't last till SummerSlam. They're kind of getting a little bit dry because crowd didn't really seem into it this week. That was literally Cricket Central during that match. You really didn't see anyone giving a shit about it. So, I don't know. We'll see. Raw was all right this week. There's a lot of good points. Obviously, the slow points, as I said. And I think it beats SmackDown for sure. And uh, speaking of SmackDown, let's get right into the blue brand. And we got uh, the open challenge back, it looks like, and Styles uh, coming out and uh, him winning. Okay, before we get into SmackDown, it, uh, crazy caught me off guard. I was at work when I when I got the news that AJ Styles beat Kevin Owens at a live event for the U.S. title. I'm like, ah, oh, there's no way. It was definitely like a DQ or something. And no, he actually won it clean. And it was interesting because as soon as that happened, they, they were promoting uh, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens for the U.S. title at Battleground. Before this even happened. And as soon as this happened at the live event. As soon as AJ Styles beat Owens. They took the match off the card. On WWE.com. And they just completely forgot about it. So something must have happened. Maybe again. This is one of those things. I was just saying. They changed their minds as weeks go on. And it looked like there was a sudden change of mind. They made AJ Styles win it at a live event. At the MSG one. And that was shocking. I remember seeing live video. People going nuts because of that. Um. Yeah, but AJ Styles, the U.S. title now, it's interesting, man. And KO is still wearing his U.S. shirt, so I don't know what's going on. Now AJ Styles has got a new shirt, and him coming out and uh, bringing back, it looks like, the U.S. Open Challenge. I'm not sure what really is going on with that. And I know a lot of people were expecting uh, Rusev to uh, accept the challenge this week. And out came John Cena. And I'm like, oh, shit, are we actually going to get John Cena for Styles for the U.S. Open Challenge? It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cool. We've had Styles and, and Cena before. They put on one of the matches of the year last year. Um, and Cena coming out, doing his whole, you know, his whole spiel and then saying he accepted it. And Kevin Owens interrupts and saying, you know, John Cena, no, 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 it's still my title. I still get my rematch. Uh, and then uh, Rusev attacks Cena from behind, and then Owens attacks Styles, and then they beat down on Styles and Cena, which leads to the main event later on in the night with uh, St- Owens and uh, Rusev versus Styles and Cena, so an unlikely paired tag team match, kind of almost like a uh, USA versus United Nations kind of thing, or uh, nation, or what was it called? Uh, that tag team that with Del Rio and Barrett and uh, what were they called? And Sheamus. Oh, man, I'm drawing a blank. Right? The League of Nations, that's it. So it's almost like another League of Nations. You know, you got Canada and Bulgaria versus USA. Um, but it was a good match. It was decent. It was nothing special. Uh, Owens basically got it gets owned at the end of it and then gets uh, kicked in the face by AJ Styles and then F, FU. And I'm going to call it the FU. I'm not going to call it the double A. And that's it. And that's how we ended SmackDown. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this open challenge thing. I know today they already put a poll out there of who could be the next uh, person to answer the open challenge. So, it kind of looks like they're going to stick with the open challenge in the next coming weeks leading up to Battleground. So, and it'll be interesting to see what happens to the U.S. title at Battleground. Maybe Owens gets his rematch because Rusev and John Cena are having their official flag match at Battleground. So, they're going to obviously be taken out of this U.S. title mix up here. And... I don't know what happened. Maybe they, they, they just have their official rematch one-on-one. Maybe they put it back on the card. Or maybe they're going to include more people. Or maybe be different people. I don't know. Who's, we'll see. Um, they, they put the poll out there of different participants to answer the challenge. So we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe Owens ends up being one of those uh, participants. And he wins the title back from AJ Styles. And then AJ Styles and him have their uh, original match at Battleground. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um it's crazy how the U.S. title on SmackDown is more elevated right now, in my opinion, than the WWE title. It, it feels like it means more. And it feels like it has that number one spot as the main title on SmackDown. It's crazy how you can elevate a title like that. But I don't know. It, it, it's, it is what it is. And uh, we'll see what, what the Punjabi uh, prison match can do for that WWE title. And speaking of, Jinder Mahal faced uh, our Niagara Falls hometown boy, Ty Dillinger this week, he actually got a TV time. Dillinger's on TV. Holy crap. They finally put this dude on TV. And a lot of people are, are giving him shit, saying, oh, he's just going to job to Jinder Mahal. And look at that. Yep, he got jobbed. And I know he lost Jinder Mahal. But I think Ty Dillinger put up a good uh, showing against Jinder Mahal. You got to dissect the match a little bit more. And you got to give Ty Dillinger credit. The guy kept up with Jinder Mahal. He sold what he needed to so- sell against Jinder. And I think... 
And, and I'm not telling you right now, Ty Dillinger is an extraordinary worker, and I think this guy has potential even to be that mid-card champion. You don't have to push this guy to be a world champion. I know it's tough to see him as with a world title right now, but if you want this guy's gimmick to get over with people, and it's still over, as you can see this week on SmackDown, you need to start pushing him with credible people in the mid-card, as there are in the mid-card for that mid-card title. That's how you get Ty Dillinger over it. I just don't understand why they're not. But this looks like it's kind of a start. They put him in the match against Jinder Mahal. He doesn't necessarily have to win this match. I almost wish they, they could have had Randy Orton come out and distract Jinder and cause him to lose to Ty Dillinger. Maybe they do it again next week. Maybe Dillinger gets a rematch and Randy Orton finally comes out and distracts Jinder and then Ty Dillinger gets a win to boost his confidence up and to get him his momentum going. I think that's probably what they should do and they probably won't because we got the Punjabi prison returning next week. So it's going to be right on SmackDown. So that stupid, ridiculous structure. Can't wait to see you guys until you guys see this if you haven't or if you if you want to see it, go and Google it. It's literally ridiculous. I don't know if they're going to revamp it and redo it like they did the elimination chambers but we'll see um as for uh, other stuff on smackdown uh xavier woods faced uh jay uso and they caught a pretty good promo before everyone thought they were going to mention something about page and they didn't I mean it's a good thing they didn't because it's actually really serious right now and i'm kind of glad that they didn't but i read a lot of people on twitter saying that they wish they said something and i actually wish they didn't just leave it alone and leave them alone uh, but Xavier Woods having a match with Jey Uso. Eventually, like the the Uso brothers and the rest of the New Day got kicked out of the arena by the ref for uh, trying to interfere too much. And Xavier Woods ends up pulling the victory on Jey Uso with a crazy finisher. He had a, like a setup in the middle rope, and then Xavier Woods went to the top turnbuckle and did this like jumping elbow. I thought it was pretty cool. And that's how Xavier Woods won. Woods wins clean on in a in a singles match. Man, when's the last time we saw Xavier Woods win a clean singles match? Definitely a long time ago. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're the Usos and, uh, New Day are continuing their feud. It looks like maybe the New Day might win the titles by Battleground or maybe they'll win at SummerSlam. We'll see. Um, I hope they start including more tag teams though, because they can't just run with these two, uh, every week and it kind of looks like they are, but it looks like there's some other stuff with the other tag teams happening and, uh, the fashion police in, uh, <laughs> Ryder and Raleigh kind of, I kind of see a, Fashion Police versus the Hype Bros next week, and I think this is where we're finally going to get uh, Ryder to turn on Mojo Rawley, and, and I think Ryder's going to leave Mojo Rawley uh, behind, like he's going to go for a tag, and Ryder's just going to walk away, and that'll be the official heel, t- heel turn of Zack Ryder, and then the Fashion Police will pick up the victory on uh, Mojo Rawley. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, it might not, but uh, it looks like they're doing that with the other tag teams. I know there's other tag teams still on SmackDown, <laughs> aka American Alpha and a ascension um but who knows and and the clones looks like they're getting released so obviously they're not going to be on smackdown um other than that uh corbin and nakamura were supposed to have a match as corbin was making his entrance nakamura and him brawled it was really really intense brawl um a lot of intensity out of nakamura we haven't seen that since his feud with samoa joe and i'm liking the the the, the, this build up of corbin and nakamura it looks like they're having a a really good feud on i and i'm giving them all props i hope they have a really good match also at uh, battleground it kind of looks like it's going that way um so i'm all for this feud happening it just you know it was all right um we had uh, Maria and uh, Mike Kanellis have a little moment there with Sami Zayn backstage. Sami Zayn trying to get their attention as they're, you know, they're cuddling, kissing this stupid love gimmick that I, I don't like the love gimmick. It's stupid, but I love the work that Mike and and Maria put in this and um, basically attacked Sami Zayn because from for him asking if they're actually uh, real wrestlers or is Maria the real fighter? And Maria just slapped the shit out of Sami Zayn, and then Mike Bennett grabs that that vase and just smashes it over the back of Sami Zayn. And uh, Maria cutting a good promo on Zayn after that. I forget what she said, but it was really, really good, man. She's really, really gotten better since uh, her old WWE days. So I'm liking this. I'm liking a Mike Kanellis and a Sami Zayn feud. I I hope they finally get a match with each other. We finally get to see Mike Kanellis in the ring. Because right now, it's just every week, man. It's just like, come on, man. You got to wrestle. It's just getting a little bit cringe a little bit. So we'll see. Um Tamina and Natty face Becky and Charlotte. And the one thing I want to pull out of this is what the fuck, man? Tamina pinned Charlotte? Are you kidding me? I honestly would have had Natty pin Charlotte here. I don't know about this Tamina thing. I know they try to make her look good and make her more uh, presentable in the women's or SmackDown women's division. But holy hell, man. That took me off guard. Tamina pinning Charlotte. Insane. Uh, and it kind of looks like they're... Uh, they, I know they're, they set up this... 
elimination match. Um, I have to say, I think it's that battle crown, but what the hell, man? A lot of people are giving gripe to the women's division on SmackDown, as they should, because what is going on, man? They got to give them a chance. This is really bad. It, 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 they they had a good start with the the SmackDown women's division since the shakeup, and it it's been proven to be better than WWE's or to, than Raw's. And <laughs> what the heck, man? What is going on lately? I honestly don't know what the hell is going on because it doesn't. There's no clear cut number one contender. Um, they're having this five way elimination to determine the number one contender at the pay per view for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Why aren't they just having the SmackDown Women's Championship at the pay per view? What the hell is Naomi gonna do? Are they gonna have the match in the same one? Are they gonna have the match right after? Like, what's gonna happen? I don't. Oh, unbelievable, man. It's just, I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe. I don't know, maybe Carmella cashes in on Naomi. I don't know what's going on here. But they're having the, the number one contenders elimination match at the pay-per-view. It to me that makes zero sense. I really hate that idea. They should be having it next week and finally get a number one contender. But to me, it just looks like Lana's going to win here. It looks like it's going to come down to Lana and Charlotte. And she's end up going to win. She's going to get another title shot. I really hope it's not the case. Um... Out of all of these guys, I'd love to see Charlotte get another crack at the title. It's the only one I think I could see. Or maybe even Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is long overdue for a one-on-one title match. And Naomi, I think they could have a good match. So, But it looks like they need a heel because Naomi is a face champion. So I can only see either Natty, Tamina, or Lana walking out of this. Maybe even just more Lana as the number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Or if they want to put Charlotte Flair back as a heel, they make her win and turn her into a heel again. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um. Uh, what else happened on SmackDown this week? Uh, I think I went over everything pretty much that I needed to. Yeah, that <laughs> that was it really. Um, then we had the main event of Cena, Styles, Owens, Rusev. I already went over that. It was decent, nothing special. But yeah, SmackDown this week it, it was it was a mess for me, and it, it didn't really nothing for me. Um. Michael Chow in the chat putting book Naomi versus Mariah Kanellis at Battleground or would they rather not have the women's title not be defended <laughs> for a third time? Yes, that's right. It kind of looks like that way, Michael Chow. And he said puts the women's title is absolute shit since the superstar shake of the SmackDown women's title has been only defended a total of three times. All against Lana. Oh, man. The Smack- hashtag give SmackDown Live women's title a chant chance needs to be trended because what the hell is going on man how do you not have your main woman's title be not be defended at pay-per-views why do you have the number one contenders match at the pay-per-view why don't you have it the night before the smackdown before and have the match at the pay-per-view for the title makes zero sense absolutely zero sense they don't give a fuck about the women's division it looks like Unbelievable, man. They're trying to do all these one-time things and making the woman better, but literally they're just not doing anything great with them. It's terrible. So SmackDown this week, it was a mess for me. Raw definitely beat it this week, shockingly, and it had its moments. So whatever, I'm going to give it to Raw. Um, let's get into that part of the show, guys. I have the, the, the list of 10 segments where I have my superstar that makes a list and the superstar that make, is a perfect 10 of the week. So let's get into it. 10. You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list! That's right, welcome to the list of 10. That segment of the show, or again, or I have my superstar that either makes a list or is a perfect 10 of the week. And I got some interesting picks this week for me. Um. Obviously, we'll just go with the perfect 10 one. My obvious perfect 10 superstar of the week. I'm giving it to Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is definitely bringing a lot to that feud that's happening right now. And the promos he cut this week were unbelievable. Um, his presence, I can just feel I can feel the anger off Samoa Joe. And I can feel the intensity off him. Obviously, I can feel it off Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns is doing absolutely shit for me. But Samoa Joe definitely bringing a lot to this feud. And definitely helped that unreal promo that they cut on Raw. And for that, Samoa Joe is my perfect <laughs> superstar of the week. God, man. that, that is, I, I keep remembering that promo. And it's just insane, man. It's crazy. Um, my... Superstar of the week that makes the list. And I know it's not his fault. He's not booking this crap. He's not writing it. He probably has an influence on it. Maybe we'll see. My list superstar of the week is the Miz. 
and this whole Mitzi's bull crap this week. Why don't you just do what you did at the end of the show and and, and, and jump Seth Rollins? You didn't need to have the Mizzies. That was literally bullshit. It's adding to the more cringe segments that you've had with the Miz Bear and all this crap. He probably has nothing to do with it. But seriously, the Miz for the Mizzies. You know what? You just made the list. God, awful, 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 awful garbage TV. I don't need to see this crap on my TV. Got to improve that. Got to improve the SmackDown Live Women's Division this week as well. Unbelievable, man. Just it's a lot of work that needs to be done, especially to SmackDown. And it's sad because Battleground is just around the corner. So hopefully they do something quick. So it is the end of the show, guys. And let's get into your fan questions out there. Yes, your Twitter fan questions. I ask you to ask me some questions this week. And I read them right here. And I answer them to the best of my abilities on the air. So... Let me just open them up here and have them right here. There they are. All righty. Um, first set of questions comes from Marcos Munoz at Marcos Munoz uh, or, um, Marcos underscore Munoz 12 on Twitter. Sorry about that. He put Raw was good. SmackDown was disappointing. Yes, I agree a little bit. What do you think? Who do you think wins, Corbin or and Nakamura? Mm, okay, so in terms of that, I think you mean like when they finally uh, face each other. It looks like at Battleground. It's tough, man, because I I honestly just want to say Nakamura for them to to boost up this this uh, Nakamura build. But I can also see Corbin winning dirty, maybe using his money to bank briefcase to his advantage while the, maybe the rest not looking, and then picking up the win on Nakamura dirty. Um. You know what? I'm gonna go with that pick, Marcos. I'm gonna pick Corbin over Nakamura at Battleground. I just, I, I, I don't see Corbin winning clean. Um, I definitely see him winning dirty, but I don't see Nakamura picking up the victory at Battleground. I see uh, Corbin coming down on top. So thank you for your question, Marcos. Uh, next question comes from Glorious Greg at xgilly929 on Twitter. Let me just check the chat. If there's anything else? Nope. I'm just double checking. Glorious Greg puts, do you think Braun Strowman will make his presence felt in next week's number one contenders match between hashtag No Man Games and Samoa Joe? Yes, I do think so, Glorious Greg. I think he's going to come out. If they don't, then it'll be interesting, man. I'll honestly be shocked if he doesn't come out uh, during that and makes his, you know, make his presence felt, as you put it. Um, I think Strowman's going to come out, though, and I, he's going to uh, attack both of them, causing uh, a no, no DQ or a DQ on somebody, and... It's going to end up being a fatal four-way for sure, in my opinion, between the four. And, you know, it's just going to, just going to roll from there. So I think Strowman will return next week. And if not, it'll be interesting to see what they do when he's not there. So it'll be an interesting outcome when we come to it next week. Um, next question by Glorious Greg. Will the Hardys be broken by SummerSlam? Because I think so. So what are your thoughts? Yes, as you heard earlier in the show, I think they'll be uh, broken at SummerSlam. A lot of people are saying night before, night after. I could kind of see the night after. Maybe they'll just be fully, fully broken at SummerSlam. We get the gimmick starting after SummerSlam. I kind of see it happening at SummerSlam. I don't know why. It's just my gut feeling that at SummerSlam, we're going to get the first debut of the Broken Hardys. Just to boost the event over. And they'll get definitely over with the New York crowd. So... Yeah, I think I'll be at SummerSlam, Glorious Greg. So thank you for your questions this week. Next questions come from Casey Selvis. And I'll just read his opinions first. He put Raw was good. We see Lesnar versus Reigns versus Joe versus Strowman. SummerSlam better than Garbage <laughs> Reigns versus Lesnar. <laughs> 7 out of 10. SmackDown was pointless. Nothing important happened. Please get the title off Naomi. Awful champion and horrible talker. 3 out of 10. Thank you for your thoughts, Casey. <laughs> always awesome as always. His question this week is, do you see Kurt Angle wrestling at SummerSlam? This is a very, very, very interesting and good question. Thank you, Casey. Do I see Kurt Angle wrestling at SummerSlam? And on my honest opinion, ladies and gentlemen, my gut feeling, no. I honestly don't see him fighting at SummerSlam. Um, I think they're going to wait and hold off on Kurt Angle. If you remember the whole Sting thing, I know it has nothing, and I'm not going to try to do the same thing, but the whole Sting thing, uh, they had Sting uh, on the, the pre-order bonus for 2K18, and we didn't a- actually get a Sting match till uh, WrestleMania. We had him make an appearance at Survivor Series and do something with Triple H and build that feud. So... Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
A lot of people are saying he will. I honestly don't think he will. I think there will be some sort of storyline thing going on at SummerSlam to whatever's going to happen next week. I don't see him wrestling. I honestly see him wrestling at WrestleMania. That's where we're finally going to get the return to the ring uh, from Kurt Angle. So that's just my opinion. Uh, I don't, a lot of people are saying SummerSlam for sure. It's going to be Triple H. You know, people are entitled to their opinion. And if you want to think that, you know, and if it happens, I'm all for it. We'll see what happens. Um, thank you for your question, Casey. Last question comes from Michael Chow. That's right. He gets his own entrance theme, and that's because he won our 2016 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year. And if you want to have your own theme song, all you have to do is win Fan of the Year. All you have to do is interact with the show. You tweet at us. You interact with us when we are live tweeting. That's all you do. And we pick the winner at the end of the year. And you get your tweets read with a theme song right here on the show. And Michael Chow's tweets this week are... Neville has been champ for too long. Who should he lose the title to? My pick is Enzo. He can't give the title. He can give the title and division a boost that it needs. You know what? I honestly see that, Michael Chow. I think Enzo would be a huge boost to the to 205 Live division. I think it would get people drawn in to 205 Live just because of his mic work. And we've seen his mic work this past weekend at Great Balls of Fire. The guy can cut promos, and the guy has charisma, and the guy just has ring presence. So... I think Enzo would be a huge benefit to the 205 Live Division. Maybe they set up Enzo versus Neville at SummerSlam. It would make sense. No, in, it's in New York. It's in the the, the area of Enzo Amore. They can get a, he can get a huge reaction behind him. I honestly think that's a good idea, Michael Chan. I think I could see that happening. Enzo going to 205 Live and taking the title finally from Neville. He's held that title for way too long. He's he's becoming a, a little bit of a boring champion, in my opinion, because no one is really stepping up and doing anything to tackle Neville. So we'll see. Um, Michael Chow's next question. Who is a current superstar that you would like to see face Lesnar someday? My current pick, or my picks are either Big Cass or AJ Styles. Good freaking question, Michael Chow. Um, who would I like to see face Brock Lesnar? Um... That's tough. It's tough. I love this. I mean, before he even faced Mojo, I would have said Samoa Joe. Uh, Big Cass is a good one. I like that. Um... Thinking of anyone, maybe Baron Corbin would kind of be kind of cool. He, he's big. He's a big guy. He can stand in the face. He, you know, he, he kind of has that presence of Brock Lesnar. Like he doesn't give a, he, he doesn't give a shit who you are. He'll stand in the ring with you. Um, other than that, I love to see Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar go at it. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, other than that, I I, I, I like Big Cass. Maybe Big Cass finally gets the opportunity when he gets uh, shown something that we haven't seen already from him, and him facing Brock Lesnar would be a huge. Huge boost for his singles career if they're looking to go in that direction. But uh, thank you for your questions, Michael Chow, and all the others. I hope I answered them to the best. I answered them to the best of my abilities. I hope I answered them to the best. Uh, you know, you hope you got the best answers out of me. Sorry. I'm a little botchy right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely tired. I've had a long day today. I actually didn't think I was going to do the lowdown show till tomorrow, but I got it out for you guys. And, uh, that's going to wrap it up. I think it's going to wrap it up. I've gone through everything I need to do. So stay tuned this Sunday for the Sunday Night Heat. It's going to be a huge episode. There's a lot of news this week. So it's probably going to be a long one. I'll see if I can do it live for you guys. I'm hoping to do it live this Sunday. So stay tuned for the tweets. Other than that, go to the channel, our YouTube channel, and check out the there to be World Cup tournament. I have World Cup videos on there. They're really good. I suggest you watch them, guys. Give it a chance. I, I'm telling you right now, some of these matches are definitely better than what you actually see on Dirty TV. I don't control any Anybody. I put the computers on full difficulty. I put them on extremely hard. I increased the momentum in it, so you, it actually puts out a really good match. So, you know, uh, we'll see. Uh, I would love to see maybe I don't know. I don't know. You know, I I, I see that in the chat. Uh, Braun Strowman puts Braun Strowman to get or Greg puts Braun Strowman against uh, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> if I can go back to this topic right now. Um, yeah, I don't want to see that. It would have to be a really, really good match, though. These guys are huge, and it'd be kind of slow and stiffy, so we'll see. Uh, but that's an interesting pick, Greg. But anyways, guys, go check out the World Cup tournament. More videos will be on the way. A blast from the past. It will be posted up soon as well, so stay tuned for that. But that is going to wrap it up 
for week number 13 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian WWE podcast that reacts and discusses the Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash nhbwr or on the speaker app available for all apple and android devices we're done after we're done recording this the podcast is posted in full on speaker on our youtube channel youtube.com slash nhbwr and on itunes and stitcher radio all links will be for you or available for you in the youtube version of this podcast you can follow the podcast on twitter facebook and instagram by searching up no holds barred wp I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and always reminding you out there to keep it on the lowdown. Back to back and you have to set